Hello, and welcome to this episode of Quality of Life. Today we're going to be covering angelic healing. And this is, again, part three of our four-part series in well-being. Uh, joining us today to talk about this subject is Tony Green. Hi, Tony. Welcome to the show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And for our viewers, Tony is a hypnotist. She is a psychic channeler, medium, mm -hmm. um, angelic healer and also an author. Yes, I am. So today we're talking about angelic healing. So I guess we can go right into it. What is angelic healing? Okay, that's a great, great question. Um, the premise for angelic healing is that we are all energy. So we're energy that has taken form because we're energy. Energy healing will work on us. Angelic healing is a form of that energy healing where simply I uh, work with angels, angelic angels, mm -hmm. right. um, to come in and help what heal whatever is needing to be healed in the person that I'm working with. So as the person is in the angelic healing, as the person is lying on the massage table with the biomat, I simply say, you know, I call in those angelic beings and healers of light and love and ask them to heal what needs to be healed in the person that's on the table. As they start that healing, I'm kind of working in that energy that is, has arrived to do the healing. I'm working in mm -hmm. the angels, if you will, working in that energy with them kind of moving energy around the table. During these healings, it's really quite amazing because I will see um, specks go, like little dark specks go. That can be negative energy, that can be a number of different things, but it's, it's really amazing to watch and to see the person on the table. Sometimes they'll have a little bit of twitching, they'll uh, come out of the healing and they'll tell me they feel pressure or chills or heat, all of it is the work being done. Some people will hear messages from the angels. Others will, will go so deep that it's like they were anesthetized, anesthetized, yep. <laughs> that's the word, to get the work done that needed to be done. Each person has a very unique experience on the table. So, and then at the end of the time, it's both the person on the table most of the time and myself feel the angels like whoosh out of the room. It's very, very amazing. Okay. You had mentioned the table. So I guess we can start with that. Any types of special equipment you use or just the table or I guess, could you describe? Absolutely. I use a massage table and on top of the massage table, I have a biomat. Now the biomat is an FDA cleared medical device. This medical device has a cancer protocol. So people who have cancer can use this biomat to help them release the cancer from the body. And it has a number of, a number of medical benefits, balances hormone, mm -hmm. help with weight loss, um, detoxes the body, helps with circulation. But the main reason I use it with every single healing and hypnosis session is because it helps the person relax. It relieves that stress. Within five minutes, their eyes are starting to close mm -hmm. and they, they have that groggy talk going on okay. like, a, like a toddler who's trying to stay awake. So that's what I use during that. And I also put on white noise to back out, to drown out any background noise so that when they hear things on the table, when they hear things while they're on the table, they know that those are messages from above and not other people talking. Okay. With that, you say angelic healing we do with the energy. How does that type of healing differ from other alternative types like chiropractic or massage or Reiki? How does that differ? Okay. So chiropractic is a manipulation, but they're still moving energy in the body. And our, our body can have stagnant energy points, and we do need to keep that energy 
flowing throughout our being, mm -hmm. in and out. Um, <clears throat> so chiropractic works mostly though with the joints and once they manipulate that joint back into space, they then that's moving that energy and whatever caused that. Um, acupuncture moves energy with needles and opens up those points again. Reiki, I'm not completely familiar with, but my understanding of Reiki is they work on one specific thing at a time, and they allow that energy to come through them, out of them, into the person, and the energy that that person is releasing then goes again through them and out. That's not necessary with this. Okay. And this healing happens um, once somebody starts having these healings, it heals emotionally, mentally, physically, psychologically, spiritually, and financially. So it's, okay. it's a very powerful, all-encompassing mm. healing. So this deals pretty much with, I guess, the word, would it be aura, a person's aura? Or is that a little different from? Both. Um, our aura is the energy around us but this also deals with the energy within us. Within. Okay. So okay. We're all energetic beings. If you took a big enough microscope, you could look right through us. We're energy that has taken form. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that energy would heal energy. Okay. I've had some pretty miraculous, um, some people have experienced some pretty miraculous experiences via this energy healing, these angelic healings. I had a girl that was in Colorado at the time. I was in Wisconsin, and I was doing a distant healing on her. She uh, called me after the healing, and she said, you know, I felt like a tinge in my lower back. And I said, well, have you, ha have you had a problem there? Have you been? She said, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be getting dialysis on Monday. And I said, I was in a panic. I'm like, don't do it. Don't do it. Get rechecked before you go on to dialysis. Sure enough, no dialysis was needed then and has not been needed since. Wow. I know. I know. That's, that's pretty incredible. That's really amazing. Now, I never take credit personally. I'm not the one doing the healing. Mm -hmm. The angels come in and they do the healing. I just hold the space and the intention with that person. And I always say to people, I know you might want your uh, arm to heal or your leg to heal, or I say, don't have an intention because that might be injured because of something else. Just have the intention that whatever needs to be healed will heal. Because whatever's causing this problem might be, it's psychological and <laughs> that needs to be taken out. And when we do that, they have just the most amazing result I mean just amazing results nice in order to do this service or angelic healing um, do you need to be like in your other focus areas where you're a channeler you know, median and hypnotist is it all tied together with these skills you know to do this type of a healing or again is this something you can be trained in or do you have to have the I guess the connection so to speak yes so the way I would say it is, if you have the intention to heal someone, if it's truly in your heart, if you really want to help people, they'll come in and they'll guide you to do it. Um, the first healings I did, I had no training on. Mm -hmm. I did it through hug. Um, I remember I was going into the vet with my dog one time and this woman was coming out and she was sobbing and she had just had to put her dog down. And I, I just wanted in that moment so badly to help her because she was so distraught. And I just wrapped my arms around her and I said, it's going to be okay. And I held her for a few seconds and she put her head up and she stopped sobbing, she stopped crying and she said, it is, it's going to be okay. I'm going to be okay now and she walked away. I didn't really know exactly what had just mm -hmm. happened, but I knew the intention in my heart, in all of my heart, I just wanted to ease her pain. And um, with that, I've been able to uh, find many different ways, many different um, 
ways of helping to heal people. So there's the, the angelic healing where they're lying on the table, mm -hmm. and then there's the guided healing where I get channeled messages to help that person either go back to a specific time or um, <clears throat> repair their heart vessel. I just say what the angels are going to do while they're doing it. And the, the process happens right while the person is sitting right in front of me. And then, of course, there's the look of love where I just look upon one or a group of people. <laughs> <laughs> and they just come in and they start healing. It's mm -hmm. that intention. Sure. And many people use many different ways of healing. Some people do hands-on healing. And that's still energetic healing. It still is. Mm -hmm. But your treatment is pretty much hands-off yes. healing as far as yes. that goes. Okay. Unless it's the hug healing, right. the rest of it is all hands-off, and I can do it individually or for a very large group. Okay. When you're doing healing, and obviously with your channeling, which we saw in the other episode, mm -hmm. as well as the event that we covered, um, do you ever see the two cross boundaries where you're healing and then some of the loved ones may be around to help with that healing or you know where they kind of cross boundaries where where it gets collaborative in therapy yeah absolutely so sometimes when i'm doing a healing on someone i'll see their loved ones in the room watching and just making sure everything is going appropriately that's the best way to mm -hmm. say it but i've also and i know this is uh, i've also been I, you know i'll go around the table and i'll step into an angel, I know it sounds, but once you step into an angel, believe me, you kind of know it. And I'll just feel my hands and my arms start doing things and I can sense and feel mm -hmm. that angelic presence. Um, I can also see their, I call them tubes. They look like big tubes. I can also see their tubes, so to say, around the table as mm -hmm. they're working on the person. Now the person will often tell me, I felt like you were working on my head and I opened my eyes a little bit and you were down at my feet. And I, I just smile and say, that's perfectly normal. That's absolutely normal because that's, I'm really not the one doing the work, mm -hmm. they are. So, yes. Okay. What are some of the types of ailments or conditions that people come to be healed a lot of times um, a lot of times it's the heart they just broke up with someone they've suffered uh, a passing and they want some of this grief to go that's a really powerful um, healing to do because mm -hmm. grief is it can stick around for a very long time so if you start bringing in new energy it can release that grief right away other things are some, sometimes medical ailments. Now, here's one thing I want to stress. When people are seeking out healing, what they believe will work is what very often works. Mm -hmm. So if a person believes this is going to work, they come in, they have the intention, they believe it's going to work, it's going to work. So I've helped people with everything from... Um, cancer and tumors to broken hearts and for each person it's very personal as to the difference that they see afterwards okay okay so I guess it still comes down to uh, mind body and spirit if you believe in it your spirituality or you believe it's all helps the body yes but I will tell you this also. I've done healings for people on their loved ones that didn't know they were getting a healing, and it's worked. Wow. So, um, and I've done loved ones on, I've done healings on my loved ones, on certain loved ones or friends that I knew were just very distraught, and the next day they're, they're like 90% better. So, if they don't know and they can't fight it or put their belief system into it, it has a really good shot of working also, mm -hmm. is what okay. I'll say. Okay. Uh, 
just to deviate a little bit, does the healing work for animals, let's say dogs or cats or? It yes, does. It does. I've worked with, with pets that have had things going on and I've done the healings on them and it has helped them heal. It has helped them heal. Now, there are some things and some re for some reason, um, whatever it is, people say you can't work on your own pets. Well, maybe that's because you're in the same energy. I don't know what that is, but, um, but I have worked on a number of pets and it's helped them heal. Also, the healing, now a lot of people wouldn't think about this, but when somebody's in hospice and they're afraid to go home mm -hmm. or they're afraid to uh, let go of their physical body, a healing can help that also and okay. can help the, that transition be very, very smooth for them. Okay. Can negative energy cause or change the outcome of the healing? Say somebody else is in the room who has negative energy, let's say, for some reason, or is it pretty much channeled through you and you have control of the... Yeah, once those angels come in, forget about it. Um, once the angels come in, whatever happens on that table, it's like they create a almost like a dome over the table okay. and they work on that person. Now, one thing I will say, anybody watching the healing will also experience the healing. So even if somebody comes in and they're very negative about it or don't believe in it, mm -hmm. the angels are also working on them because they're in that energy at that time. It doesn't go through me. It comes in for that person, works on that person. They take what they need to take. And you know, the amazing thing is that person will continue to shift throughout time. Now a shift is like evolving or, or continue to heal throughout time. So it might start here, but in a couple of months, uh, they'll be here. And then mm -hmm. in a couple of mo more months, they'll be here. It will c continue. It's like igniting their own healing abilities and then it just keeps going. Okay. When you're doing your healing, I know you've kind of led to it before, but if you're not following fast enough or if the angels or you bump into them, do they give you like a little zap or something to say, hey, you know, do it this way? No, <laughs> oftentimes, honestly, um, I just, I just, you know, can do this, I can do this, I can, I can do all, I can do this. I actually play in it. I'm, in my mind, I'm actually singing and I'm keeping my own intentions and opinions mm -hmm. out of it. But I'll start singing songs in my head about um, while I'm doing the healings. So I'm usually like going to the beat of a song sure. or whatever it is, but they will give me messages sometimes for the person on the table. Sometimes they'll give me the message. So I do a healing on somebody and then they say, now they need to stop this or stop that or this will no longer be a problem mm -hmm. or we fix this and when that person comes out i'll i'll just say so now it's important for you to understand this this and this okay something i just thought of excuse me thought of to ask you when angels come down is it always the same angels or is it different angels or don't you really know other than it's just there's a presence of angels that's a really good question i feel like they're different each person has their own individual angels whether they believe in them or not your angels are there and they're helping you and archangel raphael is the healing angel he normally comes in, I'll see that green mm -hmm. while the healings are going on, but other angels will come in also. And those are the angels sometimes that belong to that person or special angels that come in that are dedicated to a healing process that this particular person needs or wants. Okay. So for example, there was a young kid that came to me once that was addicted to heroin and didn't he, he had no personal want or will to do heroin. And in one healing session, he stopped doing heroin. Now that's miraculous. That is not the norm. He really wanted to quit and there was something that left him that day that just stopped it. Now, 
other people that have wanted to quit drinking and come to me, it's taken more sessions than sure. that. So it's really, you really have to have that want and to be done with it and not think, well, it's okay if I just have one more glass of wine. <laughs> so that's kind of one of those things also. Okay. In the environments where you do your healing, you had mentioned where you do, you know, a single healing or a group healing. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference in the way you approach the two different types of audiences? And is there a, does it take a lot out of you or is there a difference, you know, when you're trying to heal a group, does it take anything out of you? That's a great question. And actually, no. What happens is because I'm in that energy, I get like re-energized and rejuvenated and it feels amazing like I want more I want okay. more of it personally but if I'm healing a group I don't have any intention whatsoever whether it, especially in the guided healing for a group I'll just do a general guided healing based on a cer certain to topic mm -hmm. for a group if I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one guided healing that person is going to tell me what they feel they need that topic to be. And we'll talk about that topic and get to the source of that topic. And then we'll do the guided healing that way. The angelic healing, I just call in the angels and the healers that need to be there to heal the people or person at that time. And without fail, they come. They, they'll always be there for us, always. Okay. With the healing, um you kind of had mentioned you kind of meet with the person if it's an individual one step by step through the whole process so that way it's all comfortable and everybody's defined on that yeah. as far as that goes which is a good thing what are some of the cases you know through that process or some of the types of ailments that you have healed okay so there's the woman with the kidney right and then there's the uh, the boy with the um with that was addicted to heroin and now I'm trying to think and you know as soon as this is done I'll have 40 of sure. them right there that I'll be able to think of. There have been uh, uh, people going through divorce that have been really distraught over the divorce mm -hmm. that have come in and they walk out knowing exactly what to do after the healing. There's also been, um, there was a gentleman that came in actually for stop smoking and I ended up doing a guided healing on him after the stop smoking uh, hypnosis. I said, okay, they're telling me there's a, a problem with your heart and there's a valve that needs to be fixed and they want your permission to go in and fix this. And he could feel it. He could feel that it was a pressure, but he could feel it. And when it was done and he got up, he 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 looked at me and he's like, I said, I hope that wasn't too odd for you. And he said, no, I saw them. So he himself saw the angels also in there doing uh, surgery on his heart and repairing his heart from the damage that the cigarette smoking had done. Interesting. Does that come automatically when, they're, when you're doing your hypnosis and your healing or is it, I guess... How does it come through? How does it flow uh, through? Some, okay, so sometimes they just tell me. If in this case he was he was doing a um, a stop smoking hypnosis and he would not have gone to the doctor, mm -hmm. so they had to do it now because it wasn't his time to go. So they had to get this done now. So they just did it that way. They said, "Hey, this way. Start saying this," and I am kind of a like a doity doity doy. Whatever they tell me to sure. do, I'm like sure, okay, we're going to do this now. And I don't have that filter that stops them, which it mm -hmm. makes me a great vessel or conduit or right. whatever anybody wants to call that. Um, but when they're on the table, they can just go in and they already have the permission and the ability to just go in and do all of the work. But during the guided healings, if it's something physical that needs repair, we'll start mm -hmm. working on it. That doesn't happen as often um, as as you would think. That's only that's only happened a couple of times. Okay. Most of the people who come in for healing, they want the the angelic healing, and they're lying down. Okay, we have a few minutes yet, uh, as far as our show. So I wanted to save the 
best part for last, but just any final thoughts or where somebody can go to research more about angelic healing? Yeah, I, you know, there are a lot of people out there that say they work with angels, and they probably do, so you have to read what they have and decide what feels like the best fit for you. People can go to my website and look up angelic healing. Um, what I always say is you feel the right person to mm -hmm. work with. You absolutely feel that. You look at them, you feel it, and you go, this is, this is a good fit. There is a vibration that pulls you to that person. And I always also say, when somebody's really ready to heal, they get me. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's no messing around. There's no turning back at that point because I kind of dig in and I'm not afraid to get sure. my energetic hands dirty, if you will. Sure. So, yeah. Well, this has been excellent for a subject. Now, for you know, kind of a special thing, you're going to have something going on is you're actually going to be starting your own show on WSCS. Yes, I am. Thank you. Called Tony G. Can you give us a little bit of a what you're planning on covering or doing? Absolutely. Thank you for asking. I am, first of all, so honored to be starting a show on WSCS, and I'm excited. The show topics will be everything from um, healings and hypnosis sessions to people living in passion and empowering their lives as well as other people's lives. So the show is going to be a great mix of a number of different things. We'll be covering things like possibly how teenagers who are in high school are, uh, what stress relaxation mm -hmm. modes are they using and helping them to find new relaxation modes while they take their, um, their college exam or high school exams and such and all of that, every, a variety of topics. Well, I look forward to seeing it, you know, once we get some additions out. Uh, again, I want to thank you for appearing on the show for this edition of Quality of Life where we covered angelic healing. Um, again, thank you, Tony. And that concludes the episode of this show for Quality of Life. On behalf of Tony G, WSCS, I'm Dave Augustine. And if you have any questions or any other input, you can email us at or check out our website at wscssheboygan.com. Again, for Quality of Life, I'm Dave Augustine. Thanks for watching. Thank you.